Greetings and salutations, everyone. My name is Andrew Pure Coffin. and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about my Week 8 waiver wire targets for the 2023 fantasy football season. After the conclusion of tonight's game between the Minnesota Vikings and San Francisco 49ers, we will have surpassed the first bipocalypse of the season. Heads up, there's going to be another bipocalypse in Week 13 where six teams will be on by. But until we get there, going into Week 8... Of course, there are no teams on by, and luckily, we're going to have the full services of our fantasy rosters available to us, unless, of course, you're dealing with injuries, and I'm sure we're all dealing with injuries. I mean, just this last weekend, we had Bijan Robinson, Deshaun Watson, Christian Watson, Jerome Ford, again, key players to our rosters that are dealing with stuff, and hopefully these injuries don't impact their status for week eight, but if in fact it does, I'll be mentioning players at each individual position, my top running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, quarterbacks, kickers, and defenses going into week eight, players that are available in a majority of leagues in order for you to pick up not only to improve your roster for this upcoming week so we can capture a victory in week eight, but also improve your team for the remainder of the season so we can capture a 2023 fantasy football championship. Before we get into today's video a reminder there are timestamps down in the description of the video if you're looking for my specific thoughts on a specific player be sure to travel down there while you're down there be sure to subscribe to the channel again we're making daily fantasy football content for the entirety of the 2023 season with the singular purpose of trying to help you guys win a fantasy football championship so if you've yet to subscribe already be sure to do so today thank you very much at the end of today's episode i'll be putting together a couple pick em slips via underdog fantasy for tonight's game between the minnesota vikings and san francisco 49ers going into tonight and tomorrow night there's a couple specials via underdog fantasy available so for those of you who haven't checked out underdog fantasy be sure to check out the link down in the description travel on over use code andrew and make a first time deposit minimum of ten dollars and not only will you be eligible to get a first time deposit match up to five hundred dollars but you're going to get my rankings every single week sent from my email directly to yours for the remainder of the season every single sunday morning these rankings are by position by tier half ppr full ppr flex rankings so that regardless of what you're doing on sunday mornings you have an advantage upon your league mates every single sunday for the remainder of the season so again we can capture a 20 23 fantasy football championship for those of you who are wondering if you're eligible check out the map to the right side of the screen to determine your eligibility based on your current location and of course like i mentioned before if you go ahead check out underdog fantasy you can take advantage of lebron james 0.5 total points going into the kickoff of the 2023 NBA season. Be sure to go ahead, check that out today. Link down in the description. Thank you very much for the support. All right, let's get into talking about some waiver wire targets. Beginning at the running back position, let's talk about Daryl Henderson. Like I mentioned during our Saturday afternoon live stream, every Saturday afternoon, 1 to 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and yesterday Sunday morning live stream, we live stream every single Sunday morning prior to kickoff for three to four hours. Again, for those of you who haven't yet already checked us out on those overall weekend streams, be sure to go ahead, swing on by. We'll answer your questions. But in regards to what I was mentioning yesterday, and the day before. Daryl Henderson and Royce Freeman were going to be the number one and number two combat. And I expected that Royce Freeman was primarily going to be the number one of this backfield because he was on the practice squad of the LA Rams. He was in football shape. And the expectation of Daryl Henderson coming off of the couch and being active wasn't that he was going to immediately play a huge role. But nonetheless, he did. 18 total rushing attempts, 61 rushing yards, a rushing touchdown, two targets, one reception, played 57% of the offensive snaps and had 13 plus fantasy points in a half PPR scoring format. Now, going into the game, again, we anticipated that Royce Freeman was going to be the starting back. But some of the reports that I've read after the game in regards to some of the interviews that Daryl Henderson had with the media via Jordan Rodriguez of The Athletic, she said that Daryl Henderson was notified literally before the game that he would be the starter in the game and he would get a majority over the overall reps in the entire week of practice that daryl henderson participated in was just getting him into football shape i mean he even participated in practice squad you know kind of rushing attempts in order to get him in football shape and get him back into the rhythm so for the next two weeks prior to kyron williams returning because again the rams have a bye week in week 10 so the expectation is that kyron williams will return in week 11 so prior to his return in week 11 we'll have the services of daryl henderson who in the next two weeks will be the primary starting running back of this team and by all means should be of fantasy value in the last three seasons 2020 through 2022 in games in which daryl henderson has had 15 or more opportunities opportunities being a combination of targets and rushing attempts he is averaging 15 0.06 fantasy points per game in those 15 games pretty incredible numbers across the board and as a starting running back of one of the better offenses in the national football league who are going to consistently score and give their running backs a boatload of opportunities Daryl Henderson is of incredible value going forward and for those of you who went ahead and already picked him up from this weekend's conversations and are already you know trending in the right direction of starting him in this upcoming week fantastic he's currently only rostered in 24 percent of Yahoo leagues 36 percent of sleeper leagues hopefully if he's still available in your league you have an opportunity of picking him up for the next two weeks of service outside of that let's move on to our number two Amari DiMercato Amari DiMercato in week six against the LA Rams literally played 43 percent of the offensive snaps 
had two rushing attempts for 11 yards, one reception on one target, and had 2.2 fantasy points by the end of the week. And unfortunately for many of us who picked up Amari Dimercato going into week six and prioritized them on the waiver wire, we didn't really get much out of week six, his overall performance. So going into week seven, we thought, all right, Keontae Ingram is probably going to be the starter. They went ahead and they elevated Damian Williams off the practice squad again and made him an active roster member for this upcoming weekend's matchup against the Seattle Seahawks. And unfortunately, neither Keontae Ingram and or Damian Williams did anything. And it was all Amari Dimercato for this entire game. In fact, Keontae Ingram played zero offensive snaps in that game. And Damian Williams only played 12 offensive snaps. Amari Dimercato, 13 rushing attempts for 58 yards. Five targets, four catches, 17 receiving yards, nine and a half fantasy points, playing 80% of the offensive snaps. He's currently only rostered in 14% of Yahoo leagues, 20% of sleeper leagues. And in the next two weeks until the return of James Conner, the expectation is that Amari Demarcado should be the starting running back of this team going forward. And I understand the next two upcoming matchups against the Baltimore Ravens and the Cleveland Browns are not easy for his overall potential upside. But as long as he continues to get a high volume of opportunity, had 17 touches on 18 opportunities this last Sunday, of course against the Seattle Seahawks the expectation should be that Amari Dimercato can be a flexible option in a top 36 capacity at the running back position number three is Pierre Strong again like I mentioned earlier we've had a couple injuries from week seven that are absolutely going to play factors going into week eight now again keep in mind if Kareem Hunt isn't already rostered in your league you know shame on you guys I don't know what you guys are doing over there Kareem Hunt absolutely should have been rostered especially after last week's performance uh where he had one rushing touchdown much less you know, Sunday's performance against the Indianapolis Colts. Now that he's coming off another two touchdown game, obviously due to the absence of Jerome Ford. But nonetheless, Pierre Strong currently only rostered in 1% of Yahoo leagues, 4% of sleeper leagues. He would be the RB2 behind Kareem Hunt going forward. And of course, the expectation is that yes, Kareem Hunt would be the starting running back in the absence of uh, Jerome Ford. Now, the expectation of Jerome Ford's injury is to be determined. He was walking around with a boot after the game, so that could mean one of two things. Typically, that's either a high ankle sprain or uh, some sort of turf toe injury. Time will tell in terms of what exactly that is going to entail. But nonetheless, if in fact you want another piece of this backfield who will probably not have Deshaun Watson under center for the next couple weeks, who will be prioritizing running the ball, going up against the Seattle Seahawks in this upcoming week, Pierre Strong could be a value in those overall purposes. Number four is Royce Freeman. Even though Daryl Henderson had himself the majority of the overall offensive snaps and touches within this backfield, we still saw Royce Freeman, 12 rushing attempts for 66 rushing yards. Now, there is a potential in which in this upcoming week, Miles Gaskin, now that he's more comfortable within this offense, could be of value and could be activated within the game. And Royce Freeman goes back down to the practice squad. There's a possibility of that but the expectation is that if this team is going to continue to run the ball as much as they had again they ran the ball 30 times on Sunday and were quite successful in doing so if they can continue to do as such Royce Freeman could absolutely be of value and could be in that top 40 conversation of the running back position in my mind would be very similar in value to guys like Tyler Algier or Latavius Murray have the potential upside of a rushing touchdown are going to get rushing attempts but as to whether or not they accomplish that that is to be determined moving on to our number five we have Devin Singletary again there were six teams on by in week seven so if somehow some way guys like chuba hubbard or ty j spears are still available and devin singletary potentially is still available let's go ahead and get them but devin singletary he's currently only rostered in 14 percent of yahoo leagues 20 percent of sleeper leagues going into this upcoming weekend's matchup they take on the carolina panthers the carolina panthers are one of the best matchups at the running back position in terms of fantasy points allowed thus far this season and we continue to want to take advantage of those advantageous matchups the last time we saw devin singletary out within this offense they were taking on the new orleans saints in that overall matchup devin singletary week five played 54 percent of the offensive snaps had 12 carries for 58 rushing yards one reception for four receiving yards and 6.7 fantasy points now you may be thinking why is that relevant at all angie well in that overall overall game he had himself 13 total touches while on the other side Damian Pierce also had 13 total touches within that game but only 3.4 total fantasy points while only playing 33 percent of the offensive snaps if we're going to be in a situation where Devlin Singletary sees himself more of a workload and this you know backfield becomes more of a committee situation there's a chance within this given week against the most advantageous matchup at the running back position Devin Singletary could be a value and potentially a startable option if you're in desperate need and of course dealing with a lot of injuries okay let's go ahead and let's transition on to talking about the wide receiver position i'll go ahead and just present them all at once just to go ahead and give you an overview first and foremost if guys like tank dell are somehow available in your league please pick them up if somehow J zay jones is not on an injured reserve spot and you have an extra injured reserve spot on your team i would suggest probably rostering him as well for the future but nonetheless let's talk about guys like josh downs currently rostered in 36 percent of yahoo leagues 52 percent of sleeper leagues again coming off another incredible week 
now this upcoming week, he takes on the New Orleans Saints. Alante Taylor, like I mentioned with Christian Kirk last week, Alante Taylor has given up the most receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns to opposing slot wide receivers thus far this season. Josh Downs has looked incredible with Gardner Minshew this season, and they're only getting better. Back-to-back -back weeks of scoring a receiving touchdown. And specifically in the last two games, Josh Downs playing 75% of the offensive snaps while also getting himself an 18% target share. Obviously, the volume of passing attempts where Gardner Minshew had against the Jacksonville Jaguars uh, was quite unnecessary considering many of those were incomplete. But nonetheless, Josh Downs, a huge receiving option within this offense. And considering how well they played against the Cleveland Browns of all defenses, I think the matchup against the New Orleans Saints should be an easy one for Josh Downs to find himself another great week for fantasy purposes. Kendrick Bourne is another one of these great players who had himself another consecutive great game, coming off a performance of six catches on seven targets, 63 receiving yards, and a receiving touchdown. The week prior, 11 targets, 10 receptions, over 80 receiving yards. If we continue to see him get a high volume of targets, specifically in the last two weeks, a 29% target share from Mac Jones, of course, he'll be of value. They take on the Miami Dolphins. There is a potential in which Jalen Ramsey could be active for this upcoming game for the Miami Dolphins, which could be very concerning for the potential upside of Kendrick Bourne. We'll keep that in mind. But Kendrick Bourne is not just a one-week play. He's a guy that is going to be the number one receiving option of this New England Patriots offense who were able to take it to the Buffalo Bills and find a victory on Sunday that are going to be of value going forward for consecutive weeks. So hopefully we'll continue to see more performances out of Kendrick Bourne similar to thus. Again, when you go back to week two against the Miami Dolphins, he had nine targets, four catches, 29 receiving yards, an underwhelming performance, but nine targets nonetheless. Hopefully we're going to be in a situation where the New England Patriots can keep this up. Sunday's performance was the first game in which they put up more than 20 points in a game this season, and hopefully they're on the right track. Moving on to Jaden Reed, our number three. Like I mentioned earlier, Christian Watson sustained a knee injury on the final drive of that game. If, in fact, Christian Watson is going to miss any semblance of time, Jaden Reed will absolutely be of value. 16% rostered on Yahoo, 26% rostered on Sleeper. Jaden Reed, again, when you go back to earlier in the season, weeks one through three, without Christian Watson within the lineup, Jaden Reed had 5.6, 7.8, and 17.7 .7 fantasy points in those three games. He's coming off a performance of 9.6 fantasy points, and considering not only is Christian Watson in a jeopardy of potentially missing in Week 8, we also have Luke Musgrave, who may have gone ahead and had his second concussion in about four weeks on Sunday. So Luke Musgrave may be shut down for the remainder of the season. Time will tell, but he may be even placed on injured reserve because multiple concussions in a short you know, distance of time absolutely isn't something that we want to go ahead and risk. We've seen that with Tua in the past. But nonetheless, Jaden Reed of absolute value. Number four, Rashid Shahid. He's coming off the week where he had eight total targets. That's the you know season high of targets for him. But just putting this in perspective, Derek Carr has had 105 passing attempts in the last two games if they're going to continue to throw the ball at the capacity in which they are which i'm sure they want to throw the ball far less so they can win some games but if in fact Derek Carr is going to continue to throw the ball 50 plus times a game of course Rashid Shahid will always be available to potentially make a huge play down the field our number five is Jalen Hyatt like i mentioned yesterday during the morning live stream i said i wouldn't be surprised if Jalen Hyatt caught a ball for 70 yards and a touchdown. Now, he wasn't able to scoop up a touchdown, but he had two receptions for 75 receiving yards. Now, the reason why I mentioned him in that overall capacity yesterday morning has to do with the fact that if you go back to week six and look at these snap shares, he absolutely took the starting role from Isaiah Hodgins within that offense, and so did Wando Robinson over a guy like Paris Campbell. We'll talk about Wando Robinson in just a moment, but if Jalen Hyatt is going to continue to get himself a high snap share, specifically playing 70 plus percent in each of the last two games, if that's only going to continue as the week progress of course Jalen Hyatt could absolutely be a value for fantasy purposes on number six in this capacity is you know Michael Gallup Michael Gallup's coming off the bye week he's currently only rostered 17 percent of Yahoo leagues 22 percent of sleeper leagues the last time we saw him out in week six against the Los Angeles Chargers had himself 10 targets only brought in three of those overall targets for a reception but going forward should continue to be a huge part of this offense the expectation is that him and Brandon Cook's could end up vying for that number two receiving option considering Jake Ferguson, Tony Pollard, they haven't really been able to live up to their overall expectations as of late within this offense that, of course, will be throwing the ball a bunch going up against the Los Angeles Rams on Sunday. All right, let's move on and let's talk about my number seven, eight, and nine at the wide receiver position, then transitioning into talking about some tight ends for this upcoming week. The number seven wide receiver is Wanda Robinson, like I mentioned earlier with Jalen Hyatt. This overall New York Giants offense is transitioning to a younger overall, you know, starting roster. They've gone ahead and they've allowed Wando Robinson and Jalen Hyatt to play ahead of Paris Campbell and Isaiah Hodgins. So going forward, that is going to be the expectation. Odell Beckham Jr. is our number eight. Again, he is currently only rostered in 27% of leagues, coming off a performance of five catches, 49 receiving yards. This upcoming week, they take on the Arizona Cardinals. Considering how great the Baltimore Ravens looked on Sunday, I'm hoping they're going to continue that momentum and Odell Beckham Jr. will continue to be 
fantasy relevant in some sort of capacity. Moving on to our number nine, Demario Douglas. He's currently only rostered in 0% of Yahoo leagues. The expectation going into this upcoming week is that if Demario Douglas is going to continue to have a maintained role within this offense, Juju Smith-Schuster, uh, the reports that I've read, the organization doesn't believe he's you know a top five wide receiver even on their team, much less in the overall rotation of the league. So there's going to be a conversation which Demario Davis probably takes over that role for the remainder of the season. And if in fact he does, he's coming off a performance of 9.4 fantasy points, gets it done on the ground through the air, could absolutely be of value. Let's move on to the tight end conversation, beginning with our number one, Michael Mayer. Even though our hidden gem of Michael Mayer uh, stayed hidden in week seven unfortunately going into week eight the return of jimmy garoppolo is absolutely going to make a significant difference in comparison to the efforts of brian hoyer for sure the las vegas raiders take on the detroit lions monday night football week eight in the last performances that we have seen tight ends versus the detroit lions this is what they've been able to accomplish thus far this season of course mark andrews four catches 63 two touchdowns carolina panthers tight ends five catches 50 yards in a touchdown atlanta tight ends 11 catches for 88 seattle tight ends Nine catches for 132 Kansas City tight ends without Travis Kelsey. Five catches, 43 in a touchdown. There is a lot of potential for Michael Mayer and specifically tight ends every single week going up against the Detroit Lions to find themselves a lot of success. He's only rostered in 24% of Yahoo leagues, 34% of sleeper leagues. Keep in mind, if guys like Dalton Schultz, Jake Ferguson, Dalton Kincaid, Logan Thomas, John U. Smith aren't already rostered, you could absolutely consider them as potential pickups. But I'm assuming considering they're all already rostered in 40 plus percent of leagues, they're not available within your league. Let's move on to our number two, Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill is coming off of back-to-back -back weeks in which he has had a career high of overall routes ran. He ran 33 routes in week six and 42 routes in week seven. We have seen Taysom Hill get a huge utilization within the receiving game, which typically isn't, you know, what Taysom Hill does. He's typically, you know, either going to throw the ball or run the ball in their overall Wildcat scheme. Nonetheless, he was able to score a touchdown last week on Thursday night against the Jacksonville Jaguars, catch a couple passes. He also did... A lot of that the week prior in week six. And a lot of it has to do due to the absence of Jawan Johnson. But even if Jawan Johnson comes back, I would assume that Jawan Johnson is going to take over the role of what Foster Moreau has done in the last couple weeks. And instead, Casey Mill can potentially maintain this role within this offense. And if in fact he's going to do so, I mean, we look at weeks one through five, was only playing 35% of the offensive snaps. Most recently, weeks six and seven, playing 60% of the offensive snaps. If he continues to be relevant, he has rushing upside, receiving upside, and of course, can always throw a touchdown every single week. The final option at tight end is, of course, Tyler Conklin. He takes on the New York Jets. The Jets, thus far this season, they've given up 51 yards and four catches to Logan Thomas, 32 yards, four catches, and a touchdown to Buffalo Bills tight ends. 63 yards to Noah Fant, 90 yards to George Kittle, 88 yards to Arizona Cardinals tight ends. Again, this is an advantageous matchup to say the least, and hopefully coming off the bye week, Zach Wilson will continue to look in the direction of Tyler Conklin. Now let's talk about some quarterbacks. I wanted to mention six quarterbacks in specific, primarily because I'm preparing you guys for week nine. We're not talking about week eight because again, there are no teams on bye week. But going into week nine, there are going to be four teams on by the Denver Broncos, the Detroit Lions, the Jacksonville Jaguars and San Francisco 49ers. So for many of us, Brock Purdy, Trevor Lawrence and even Jared Goff will not be available for us to play. Therefore, I want to prepare you for week nine preemptively, you know, kind of pivot you in the direction of specific quarterbacks that we want to be starting in the coming week. So in week nine, Baker Mayfield and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they take on the Houston Texans. That's my number one option. Derek Carr takes on the Chicago Bears as my number two option. Mac Jones taking on the Washington Commanders, our number three option. We'll have Gardner Minshew taking on the Carolina Panthers. Bryce Young taking on the Indianapolis Colts. Again, that's a little bit of a revenge game there. The Indianapolis Colts versus Carolina Panthers. Frank Reich taking on his former team. Maybe they can capture their first victory in that week if they're not able to do so in week eight this upcoming week and then we have kyler murray as the final option if in fact you have an available ir spot you can go ahead and roster kyler murray but he will probably not be available for week nine he's more of someone that is going to be available potentially in week 11 that is my expectation for the arizona cardinals offense and getting him kind of ramped up and prepared going forward but either way these are the quarterbacks that going into the upcoming weeks specifically if you're going to be missing players in week nine week to end week 11 due to bye weeks they could be available and potentially help you out. You want to preemptively pick them up so you're not stressing for a you know waiver option, a streaming option of the quarterback position. Let's go ahead and move on. Let's talk about kickers and defenses before we close out today's video in regards to waiver wire pickups. We get back to the conversation of if, in fact, somebody dropped Brandon Aubrey, the Dallas Cowboys kicker, or if someone dropped Nick Folk, the Tennessee Titans kicker, those guys should probably already be rostered. But some of the other players that currently... 
have wide ranges of availability. Talking about Kaimi Fairbairn coming off the bye week, only 5% rostered in Yahoo, 7% rostered in Sleeper. You got to remember, Kaimi Fairbairn is one of the best kickers in the National Football League thus far this season. His fantasy point outputs have been 9, 8, 13, 12, 15, and 8. Taking on the Carolina Panthers this upcoming week, the expectation is another big performance out of Kaimi Fairbairn. Dustin Hopkins, in the last two weeks, has had 17 fantasy points and 22 fantasy points. He has put up 39 fantasy points in the last two games. As long as we continue to see P.J. Walker as the starting quarterback of the team, the expectation is that Dustin Hopkins is going to continue to kick a lot of points through the uprights and score a lot of fantasy points for our rosters. Thus far, besides the 17 and 22 point performances, he's also put up 12, 9, 12, and 5. Moving on to our final kicker, we have the rookie Blake Groupie. He's only rostered in 6% of Yahoo, 7% of Sleeper League's Blake Ruby coming off another great performance. His most recent performance consists of 10, 14, 9, and 11. And all of that being said, he also had missed a 50-yard field goal in each of the last two games. So that's potentially five points, depending on your scoring format in your league, if you guys get one point per overall 10 yards. That's potentially five additional points he could have had in the last two games, which would have had him being 10, 14, 14, and 16 fantasy points. He hasn't been great in terms of 50 plus yard field goals this season, but either way, they continue to stall out in many of their drives, taking on Indianapolis. Either way, it's going to be indoor stadium, whether it's in Indy and or New Orleans. I can't tell you off the top of my head, but nonetheless, another great option at the kicker position. Moving on to team defenses that we might want to roster. The Jacksonville Jaguars are only rostered in 26% of leagues, which is a surprise to me, considering how great they have played thus far this season. This upcoming week, the Jacksonville Jaguars take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Could be an advantageous matchup. We see the Atlanta Falcons. They take on the Tennessee Titans. If the Tennessee Titans are going to be without Ryan Tannehill, absolutely, I want to start any defense against Malik Willis. Any opportunity I have. And in the final defense I wanted to mention, especially considering they were taking on the Philadelphia Eagles last night, there was an expectation that Miami Dolphins defense may have been dropped. They still had themselves 12 fantasy points last night. They take on the New England Patriots last time out in week two against the Patriots. I think they scored nine fantasy points. There is an expectation where they could probably put together another great performance against that offense. If in fact, the Patriots aren't able to find their footing for another week here. For the 2023 season all right with this all covered i want to thank you guys for watching today's episode we're going to go ahead and conclude today's ep episode by putting together a couple pick em slips via underdog fantasy right now before closing out thank you very much so going into tonight's game between the minnesota vikings and san francisco 49ers my favorite play is brock purdy going higher than his overall fantasy point total of what is it 15.35 i think he's very capable of accomplishing that now to go ahead and pair him up, you need to have someone from a different team. You can't pair up a bunch of San Francisco 49ers. Otherwise, I would go ahead and have him, Ayuk, and probably George Kittle going over their overall yardage counts, and it would be a great week. But I wanted to go ahead and take advantage of the LeBron James 0.5 total points. I'm going to take it easy. Again, it's a $10 maximum entry. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to 3x my overall entry and potentially go ahead and start off the week correctly yesterday's overall play of Lamar Jackson going over his overall passing attempts did not even come to fruition because again uh they blew out <laughs> the Detroit Lions to say the very least did not have to throw the ball in the second half and Cooper Cup who was my other part of that overall pick em slip was a no-show unfortunately as P you know Puka Nakua was the primary threat within that offense but either way this is my favorite play of tonight you can take advantage of LeBron James you don't have to you can go ahead and pair up Brock Purdy with any other player, with whether, whether it be a different sport, whether it be tonight's game, etc. But it has to be on the other side of the matchup. Either way, that's going to cover for me today. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Again, if you haven't checked out Underdog Fantasy, please be sure to use code Andrew. Make that first-time deposit a minimum of $10 to not only get my rankings, to get the first-time deposit, but, of course, also be able to take advantage of the LeBron James play prior to tonight's game to go ahead and start off your underdog journey correctly. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And until tomorrow, we'll be talking about my top 36 running back rankings. I'll see you guys. Peace.